In the last decade or so, we've all been subjected to the crop of live-action remakes from the Disney Corporation. Some were decent, some were hot shit, some were just the same thing but longer and still just as bad. A lot were just the same story with what nuance was there, stripped away for the sake of an easy nostalgia grab. The recent crop of stuff, along with the frankly bizarre mauling of Wish for no other reason that I can find, besides it not being what people wanted, and also not 2D, but we'll get to that, has led me to think about what the real merit is when it comes to 2D versus 3D, especially with the recent release of Hasbun Hotel, and surprisingly enough, the final season of Sonic Prime. See, Disney has a large catalogue of films to work with, and the fact they've just now stopped dipping into the renaissance is shocking to me, because the stuff before that was certainly good, mostly, but they could definitely be improved on, and I think slapping on a new coat of paint would be an interesting way to do that. One big issue the live-action remakes have is that they're taking a story that was never meant to be in live-action, and making it in a medium that sucks out all the charm and joy from said story, on top of making them just longer to get through and less fun. I'd say the best example to explain this is either Beauty and the Beast or Aladdin. Both films are fine on their own, and I'd even say have some of my favorite performances from these things, but they take stories about magic and monsters and high fantasy concepts that work in animation and try to justify them in a live action setting which is just way harder to do. I mean, I like Dan Stevens as the Beast, but it's no wonder half the movie is in this dark lighting so you can't see the CGI. And Will Smith is a really good genie pick, but they were trying to put him into a mold that he did not belong in, when say, Billy Crystal or even Reggie Watts could have fit this role extremely well. Along with that, I've seen this uncomfortable idea, again in the wake of which is released, funny enough, that the only way to tell animated stories are in a 2D format, rather than just letting the storyteller pick which medium works for their story. Some can work in a 2D space, some can work in a 3D space, and some can work in a live action space, and dealing in absolutes is never a good idea and is where I tend to see people trip up. Having said all of that, here's why Disney should absolutely remake its bad catalog in its modern animation style. 3D animation gets a bad rap these days and it seems to come from two major places, fatigue and nostalgia. As CG as an animation form is only about as old as I am, so people my age have only known a world with CG films, but anyone older had grown up with traditional 2D animation, which I will take a sledgehammer to that phrase here in a moment. But anyway, 3D animation has a lot of inherent benefits for filmmaking, especially in the sense of assets and resource management. Once the model is done, you can pose and animate and do whatever you want with it for as long as you have it in your library. There's an inherent benefit benefits of just having the model sitting in a void. Compare this to 2D films where everything has to be hand-drawn in this format, because as we all know, Flash and other 2D animation today is still done on computers, but it's much less forgiving on how you actually get the thing to move. Yes, there is a lot of automation to this animation, but it's still a tremendous headache whenever their models break or anything of that sort. CG films have their headaches as well, but the amount of overhead is significantly lowered, and it saves time when you just have to move the rig in the way you need, as opposed to drawing every frame of every character and end up having to shortcut it. Although it is a lot of fun going frame by frame with a lot of these things, some of these are just hilarious. For an example of what I mean when I say assets being easier to use and make, look at this scene in Cinderella. Tremaine is telling her daughters about the princess endeavor, and we get like four shots of this room. It makes the space feel more cramped than it really is. Because they had to draw every frame by hand, that led to a lot of reused background shots and things being made once for the sake of saving resources. Or here, for example. Can you tell me which part of this image is on a different cell? That's what I thought. If they remade it in CG, they could make the house once and be done with it, put a camera in there and get what they needed. It'd also make texturing the walls and carpet easier since they're repeating patterns that you'd only need to make two or three rows for, and then duplicate it, and boom, you got yourself a wall texture. The process of making older movies again would also be helpful for making outside shots, as half the time, I can't even tell what I'm looking at. I mean, look at the background when she meets the fairy godmother. It's just a bunch of blues and odd shapes. And hey, I'm the first person to say who cares about shit like this, but I can't help but think of they can make this again and actually build the kingdom and house around this scene, you can get more varied shots and even some panning scenes. Snow White did this funny enough, but I can't remember a lot of others following a character as they moved across the scene. Mostly they just added blurs to make it seem like they were moving, when in reality they were just in the middle of the frame. Or another thing I notice in a lot of these older films is that sometimes the cell will be above the background and it causes a shadow to appear which just removes the character from whatever reality they're trying to ground them in. I do feel like it's worth mentioning, I don't 
begrudge these things happening, but it doesn't detract from my point that I think adding that extra freedom and dimension would make the movies pop out to some degree. I know most people won't love that it's happening at all, but that's gonna happen with literally anything you make, so I don't see that as a real deterrent. It could also give an excuse to make some of their less well-aged films be more in line with modern sensibilities. Peter Pan is a good candidate for this, as no one saw or cared about Peter Pan and Wendy, but you could, oh, I don't know, give the kids actual clothes? Like, yeah, Wendy in a nightdress is iconic, but maybe a pair of shorts or leggings or something underneath would be nice? John definitely needs a pair of pants at the minimum. Michael's fine, though. A toddler in footy pajamas is completely fine by me, I don't really care. The natives desperately need a redesign and retooling of their representation, because they are so badly portrayed here and feeding some very bad takes from around that era, that still kind of persists to this day. Maybe make Peter less of a misogynist prick in his first interaction with Wendy. I'm not saying he needs to be a perfect, flawless character. He's fine, but easing up on him saying shit like, These girls talk too much. And, Well, get on with it, girl. Would probably be a welcome change for a lot of people. Hell, the Kingdom Hearts version of him is pretty spot on, but where he directs his ire and namesickness is an all-around better way to do the character. Today's the day I shall be rid of you forever! I'm busy right now, Hook! On top of all of that, it can give older films more of a plot. Snow White is 75% waiting around for the plot to come get her, and then it's over. I think adding in an actual musical number, and having a montage where the dwarves each spend a day with her in a song, where they all get to see a new side of snow, and open up to her that ends with a big group rendition of the chorus, would be a good addition to what little story is here. Maybe for Bambi, give a reason for why his father isn't there, or just inject him into the movie and that'd be a good take on a dysfunctional family. I'm not asking for the moon here, I'm more just trying to explain why I I think this idea has merit beyond just doing it. Along with all of that, it also has to do with an accessibility thing, as I see better in a 3D space than I do in a 2D one, and I'm sure a lot of other people with sight impairments do as well. When I was growing up, I had poor depth perception as I was both near and farsighted from my messed up prescription, so with the advent of 3D technology, I was able to see better, and it let me get a sense of scale and depth better than even the Renaissance was able to accomplish. So for me, this idea isn't just do it because I want it and or like it, it's more of a, hey, try this and see what happens, for a number of reasons. While I'm on this topic, as I'm not much of an animation buff by any stretch of the imagination, and probably won't talk about this for a while, I need to address the phrase I brought up earlier, traditional 2D animation. I hate this phrase so much because of the recent discourse, because while I understand what people are trying to say, the phrasing is what bothers me. Whether people like it or not, the way you talk about something influences phrases and topics, along with just the general tone, and boy do I know that all too well. When you hear the word traditional, you think positive, you think old but good, and that it's kept around for a reason. When you hear modern, you think new and trendy, with very little in the way of a positive connotation, which is also steeped in nostalgic whining over things people haven't seen in a long time or misremember. The one big benefit of doing the Disney project is that I got a new perspective on the company's films on the whole, so I got a more fresh view on these films and a newfound appreciation for both 2D and 3D animation, and honestly was really baffled the amount of bashing it gets for basically not being like people's childhoods. And I know this because people kept raving about movies that emulate either story elements from their childhood or are just using the aesthetic while still being 3D. I really do not like Puss in Boots The Last Wish, and I want to go in depth as to why on its own, but the reason it's popular is because it has an edgy furry OC as the bad guy, and the action scenes a Spider-Verse, and that's really it. Its animation is standard and its moral is beaten into your head from one character, and Puss's arc is handled well, but its conclusion is hindered by the fact that he still fights death in the end, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Different day, different rant. Both currently released Spider-Verse movies are fantastic, but they have this 3D with 2D outline thing going on, which makes them feel more like a 2D film. Both of these approaches seem to have worked in terms of getting people past their biases, and while I have gripes with all three films, I can't deny that they have value. And it's not like you can't do things like smear frames and expressions like the old days. I mean, just look at the aforementioned Sonic Prime. Did you know you could do this stuff in 3D? Cause you can, and I'm really tired of people acting like you can't. I'm not saying 2D doesn't have value, and I'd be okay with more 2D films in general, but I understand why it's been relegated to television for so long, as it's kinder to a more constructive budget, since making a 3D television show look even passable is way more effort, especially when everyone will bay at the moon that it should have been 2D anyway. The elephant in the room to this whole discussion, though, is Once Upon a Studio, which has 2D and 3D characters interacting on screen, and people have been using this as a sort of smoke gun to both arguments like this and Wish itself. 
that poor movie never stood a chance, I feel so bad for it. What most people aren't getting is that 8 minute short took 5 years to make on its own. That's why Raya and Kanto and other things that were made in the last few years aren't as prominent as stuff that was made in 2019 and before. The public seems to use this short as a way to say 2D animation can still be in films, but the issue is that most studios aren't equipped to do that. Even DreamWorks, who was built out of spite by an ex-Disney executive, only has 5 2D films under their belt. One of them sucks, one of them is overhyped, one I've never seen, one is pretty good, and the last one is ungodly fun. But even then, they solely went into 3D once they got their feet under them because of how much easier it is to make and how much less manpower is needed to make a consistent product. Again, I'm not saying this is a good or a bad thing. Corporate America is deeply capitalist, and I'd rather have a few good movies once in a while than derisive or panned movies that are under immense crunch every year. If Disney would ease up and give more of a fuck about maintaining an audience than trying to rake in what little money they can, year after year, we'd probably have more 2D and 3D films mixed together, but under the current system, I'd rather try recrafting old magic with new tech. Which is the point of innovation, isn't it? Thank you for watching this. I know it's an unpopular take to have, but I really wanted to make a video talking about the increasing divide between 2D and 3D, and how I think Disney could at least try and make the remake game more interesting than it is currently. If you have a different take, let me know! I'm really trying to get more into having my opinions change these days. I'd also like to thank my patron, Zuck! If you'd like a shoutout in videos and all that good stuff, I'd love it if you consider subscribing to my Patreon in the description. My name is Chris, and I hope you have a fractastic day.